Hello everyone, my name is Atish and topic of this learning video is partial fraction decomposition. In this learning video, we'll start with the definition of partial fraction followed by its types and then example based on the types and the combination of types. Okay, now before we start with the definition, let me tell you what is the importance of learning this partial fraction decomposition. The importance is uh, the topics that we have in our syllabus needs the understanding of partial fraction what happens sometimes the uh, complex partial fraction is given to you and it is uh, not easy to solve or not easy to apply the transformation on it so one needs to study this before we start with the any of the transformation or to evaluate any of the integral okay so without much ado let us start with the definition of partial fraction so what is partial fraction? It is defined as each of two or more fractions into which a more complex fractions can be decomposed as a sum. Okay. Now, in simple words, you can say a partial fraction decomposition is nothing but a process where a complex fraction can be decomposed as a sum of two or more fractions. Okay. Is the definition clear? Now we'll move on to see the types of partial fractions. So there are three different types of partial fractions, namely linear, which is of the type like this. Second one is repeated linear. And the third one is quadratic. Okay, so as you can see why the types are like linear, repeated, linear and quadratic as the name itself says linear means we'll be having uh, linear factors in the denominator. Repeated linear means same factor will be repeated number of times in the denominator and quadratic means a quadratic uh, expression will be there in the denominator. Okay, now let's move on to the remarks which are very important in order to learn these methods okay so the very first remark is the method that we are going to discuss in this learning video is applicable if degree of numerator is less than the degree of denominator okay i have written numerator as nr and denominator as dr okay now any fractions which satisfies this condition degree of numerator is less than the degree of denominator those fractions are called as proper fractions and to those fractions only we have the methods of partial fractions okay now this is not the case all the time like degree of numerator is always less than degree of denominator sometimes it may happen that the degree of uh, numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of denominator then at such cases what we have to do we arrive at a question so in that thing what you have to do you have to recollect the things that we have learned in the school days named as long division method do you remember what is long division method if good if yes then it's good if not then not to worry about what is long division method you just simply need to uh, divide numerator by denominator and once you get the degree of numerator less than the degree of denominator then we can apply these methods okay whenever there is the case like degree of numerator is less than degree of denominator like here what is the degree of numerator zero and what is the degree of denominator two so this satisfies the condition so we can apply the methods and whenever any fraction which has degree of numerator less than the degree of denominator those fractions are called as proper fractions otherwise improper fractions as you can see in the type we have one in the numerator but this is not always the case instead of one you may be having any number like seven or five or anything okay not just number but sometimes it may be like 2x plus 3 or x square plus 2x plus 4 something like that okay so you need to take care of these things so these are the types and we have seen the remarks and now let us take an example 
based on the types what was the first type that we have discussed linear then repeated linear and then quadratic so uh, i am going to take the first example on linear okay so express x minus 1 upon x minus 2 into x plus 1 into x plus 3 as a partial sum before i start with the proceedings uh, let me ask you one question this fraction is a proper fraction or improper fraction so you can pause the video for a few seconds think over it and come up with your answer so i hope you have made your decision so what fraction it is it is a proper fraction and whenever you are giving your answer you must have a justification of it okay why we are calling this fraction as proper fraction because the degree of numerator is 1 whereas the degree of denominator is 3 okay now let us express this as a partial sum okay so how many factors are there 3 so how many sums will be there 3 okay so as you can see we have the left hand side as this and we write a upon x minus 2 plus b upon x plus 1 plus c upon x plus 3 okay now the method that i am going to tell you i am not going to tell you the name of that method instead i will apply the method first and then will let you know the name of the method now what is our objective our objective is to get the value of a b and c okay now to get the value of a what you have to do you just have to look at the factor what we have we have factor x minus 2 what is x equal to 2 so what is the value of x x is equal to 2 so what you have to do to get the value of a substitute x is equal to 2 in the left hand side by covering this factor so what i am going to do i am going to cover this factor and in the remaining values and in the remaining terms i will put x is equal to 2 so what is it 2 minus 1 upon 2 plus 1 into 2 plus 3 okay so what is the value of a the value of a is 1 by 15 okay now on a very similar lines we'll find out the value of b what factor we have in the denominator x plus 1 so what is the value of x minus 1 so what we are going to do is we are going to put x is equal to minus 1 in the left hand side covering this x plus 1 terms okay so you just ignore this term so just put x is equal to minus 1 so what is it minus 1 minus 1 upon minus 1 minus 2 into minus 1 plus 3 okay so what is the value we are getting for b 1 by 3 now just pause the video for few seconds or a minute and find out the value of c like the like the way you we have found out the value of a and b so just pause the video i hope you got the value of c and how one can find out the value of c x is equal to minus 3 we have to put in the left hand side covering this term x plus 3 so what is it minus 3 minus 1 upon minus 3 minus 2 upon minus 3 plus 1 okay so what you'll be getting you'll be getting this and cancelling out and just doing some elementary mathematics you'll get the value of c as minus 2 by 5 now at last what you have to do you have to write down this equation again and then you have to put the value of a1 by 15 b1 by 3 and c minus 2 by 5 okay now when we have found out the values of a b c what we have done we have covered x minus 2 then we have covered x plus 1 and then we have covered x plus 3 so this method is called as cover up method because to find out the value of a b and c we have covered up the factors okay but one remark i would like to make here this cover up method is applicable when you have different factors in the denominator okay then only this method is applicable so as you can as we have seen 
the example on type 2 so let me take example 2 which will be on type 2 correct and what is the name of type 2 repeated linear So this is the example on type 2. Express 2x plus 3 upon x minus 2 whole square as a partial sum. Okay. So let me write down this expression or this fraction. Proper fraction I must say to be precise as a linear as a partial sum. So a upon x plus 2, b upon x plus 2. Now let me ask you one question. Can we apply cover up method in this case? So the answer would be no. Why? Because we don't have different factors in the denominator. We have the same factor x plus 2 repeated two times. So cover up method is not applicable. So what to do next? Next you have to go for the another method which is which is just the simple method. What you need to do is you just have to take the LCM. Once you take the LCM we will be getting this. Now see the term in the denominator from the left hand side and from the right hand sides are same so the terms will get cancelled and we remain with 2x plus 3 is equal to ax plus 2 plus b now what you have to do you just have to solve the brackets to get this 2x plus 3 is equal to ax plus 2a plus b okay now next thing you know can you predict the next step yes so what you have to do you just have to equate the coefficient of the like terms from both the sides so what you'll be getting will be getting the coefficient of x in the left is 2 and in the right is a so what is the value of a will get a equal to 2 the coefficient of the constant term on the left is 2a plus b and from the left we have 3 okay so two equations two unknowns ideal condition and you can easily found out the value of a and b a we have already found out that is a easily easy one now put the value of a in this equation to get b okay so it's a very simple one a is equal to 2 and b is equal to minus 1 at last what we are going to do we are going to substitute this a equal to 2 and b equal to 1 in the main equation so in this way we have written or we have expressed the given fraction as a partial sum okay now as you have seen example 1 was taken on type 1 example 2 taken on type 2 so can you predict the example number 3 example number 3 will be on type 3 half correct okay let us make it more interesting by taking example 3 as a combination of type 1 and type 3 to make it uh, more interesting okay so i'm taking example 3 so here it is express x plus 1 upon x minus 1 upon x square plus 1 as a partial sum this we have to do now as you can see why it is a combination of type 1 and type 3 because we have linear factor as well as the quadratic expression okay so we have to express this fraction as a upon x minus 1 bx plus c upon x square plus 1 now here arrive one question for you can we can we apply cover up method in this problem so what is your answer the answer should be yes and what is the justification the justification is we have two different factors in the denominator so we can apply okay so to get the value of a come on recollect what we have done to find out the value of uh, unknowns when you have linear factor to find out the value of a we have to put x is equal to 1 in the left hand side covering the factor x minus 1 so what we get 1 plus 1 upon 1 square plus 1 so it is 2 by 2 that's 1 okay now we have to find out the unknowns b and c so cover up method is no longer applicable so we'll go with the method 2 just take the lcm and equating the coefficient of like terms okay so i have taken the lcm same term in the denominator from both the sides so that will cancel out and then we remain with this and then 
just take the just solve the brackets to get this now right hand side will be getting this now intentionally i have written zero times x square why it is so because i have the terms of x square on the right and when it is time uh, to equate the coefficient of x square from both side so just the sake of convenience i am writing if uh, the coefficient of x square from the left is uh, absent so you can certainly write zero but it feels good to write the coefficient of x square as zero that's why i am writing okay so just collecting the like terms like terms are terms of x square a plus b terms of x c and minus b and terms of constant c a minus c okay now equating the coefficient what we get we get a plus b equal to 0 c minus b equal to 1 and a minus c equal to 1 now we have to get the values of a b c okay so three equations three unknowns ideal condition and you are very well know that how to get the values of unknowns okay now as you already know that we have already found out the value of a by cover up method now why i have found out there is a reason behind it why i have found out the value because solving simultaneous equation takes a little bit time so to save those time to save that much of time i have found out already a equal to one now see it is very easy to get the value of b and c so i will put a is equal to one in this equation to get the value of c so i got the value of c zero next i will put the value of c in this equation to get the value of b okay or i can put the value of a in this to get the value of b c minus b equal to 1 c is 0 so b equal to minus 1 okay now once you have done with all these values a b c it's a good practice to write it's good practice to write what the final answer here x plus 1 upon x minus 1 into x square plus 1 is 1 upon x minus 1 plus minus 1 into x plus 0 upon x square plus 1 okay so i hope this uh, learning video is making sense so just make examples of on your own or if you have any difficulty in this you can contact me i will be there to help you all so this is what we have in this learning video so just a summarization in just few seconds we have started with the uh, importance of partial fraction decomposition number one then number two we have seen the types number three we have seen the remarks uh, of proper fractions on proper fractions and improper fraction and then we have seen example on type one type two and combination of type one and type three okay so this is what we have in this learning video so Thank you for watching this learning video and enjoy learning digitally. Thank you.